Good evening and welcome to Prime Business. I am Emma Davis. A look at our stories for tonight. Banking consultant Dr. Richmond Etienne has described as prudent measures outlined by Bank of Ghana to turn around the 10.5 billion CDs losses posted last year. The central bank has ruled out some key measures which it believes will improve uh, its financial position by the end of this year. Dr. Etienne Hine, however, maintains that the central bank needs to be strict on these policy measures. We have an asset. They were holding a lot of government assets, uh, serious. So when the DDP came, that it affected their liquidity position. Let us get it. If you were holding bonds, you could trade the bonds. Mm -hmm. If you were holding those days, treasury bills, you could do that. But unfortunately, apart, in addition to the cocoa bills, all these things were basically reduced to, if you say, reduced to nothing. And because of that, they had to operate from a zero point of view. And by so doing, your interest, interest cost or the interest expense had not gone down, but your interest income would have gone down. That leads into the losses. So that is actually a contributing factor of the losses in 2023. Well, because you've been called under the IMF program, there isn't much you can do about it. It's a jacket. It, they are not just saying it. It is something that was imposed on them. Because if you look at the budget financing, the physical budget financing, in 2020, we did 15% GDP. That was financed by the central bank. And when you, uh, 2021, we did 12.3. 2022, we did, I think, 9.3 or thereabout. Then 2023, it was 7.7. 7. 7. All these things have to be financed. Now that they are tell, uh, the IMF is telling you that, do zero by... Finance. It means that you're not going to lend any money to government. Mm. And don't forget, by, by monetizing or financing government, it leads to inflation and depreciation of the currency. So it is one methodology that will help the currency, at least if they stick to what they've been told, at least it will be able to stand. Some players within the financial sector are calling for more initiatives to boost financial inclusion. According to the Chief Executive Officer for Exchange Traded Funds, Joel Felix Kirk, more sensitization programs are key to boost the confidence of investors. He spoke to Joy Business at the DEFT Ghana Conference. Interest in savings and investment amongst the youth thus boosting financial literacy. Cook urge individuals to take advantage of various investment offerings. Um, we are right now having our first live event here in Accra, Ghana, and DETF is the first trading platform, investment platform that basically suits the needs of Africans. This means we offer everything all in one, one place, crypto, stocks, ETFs, commodities, and it's basically the future in terms of financial inclusion. So basically people with low entry barriers have the possibility to invest like a pro. And this is why we are here, because we want to share uh, the, the, the next generation trading platform for the future of Africa. Exchange traded funds are investment funds that trade on stock exchanges, much like individual stocks. So we've been building the ETF for the last three years. Um, in cooperation with our Ghanaian uh, community and that's why we uh, have, have made DETF the way it is and why it serves the needs of Africans. DETF is a company registered in Germany um, which basically is like the, the highest compliant country in the world uh, to ensure the trust and there are easy steps on how you can participate uh, on DETF. So step one, go to www.d etf.com, register, log in, deposit via USDT, and you can start to trade and invest or uh, buy uh, DETF packages. Now, the business community has warned it wouldn't mind passing on the cost to consumers if the upward adjustment of water and electricity tariffs by the PURC affects their cost of production. According to them, they are already uh, the. According to them, already the economic climate is not friendly to the operations. Therefore, these recent tariff adjustments will exacerbate their concerns. Speaking to Joy Business, Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the Association of Ghana Industries, Chona Mapelu, maintained consumers would have to brace themselves to pay more for goods and services. Certainly, somebody must pay for this cost. 
somebody must pay. The issue now is to be able to determine whether we are able to ship this cost to the consumer or whether we have to endure it. The, the reality is that it is difficult to assume that you can easily ship this to the consumer. Given that these days we have several products in the market that are imported and, and, and most of them do not have to meet the standard. There's increase in, in importation of fake products and all of that. And we have to compete with these people. That's where the challenge is. So the challenge is that if you increase the price of your products, you are priced out of the market. And you would have observed that some companies are closing down. In fact, very often more than anticipated because they are unable to compete in the market because the prices of raw materials are going up, the prices of utilities are going up, yet you are unable to increase the price of your product because if you do, you will be priced out of the market. So this is really the situation we find ourselves now and it's a very difficult uh, uh, situation for us. Some episodes back, we learned that your run rate is a measure of how much more you can operate on your entrepreneurship journey before you run out of cash. Today, we learn about your burn rate, a more retrospective metric. Run rate is more of a futuristic metric, whilst the burn rate, of which is today's discussion, is more a retrospective metric. Hello, some episodes back, we spoke about our run rate. I remember when we used the example of being in a car, not knowing how long it would take until your fuel runs out. It's important to calculate how long you have before you run out of fuel, right? Well, assuming you've reached your destination, now you have to have a retrospective analysis of what has happened. So the run rate is more of a futuristic metric, whilst the burn rate, of which is today's discussion, is more a retrospective metric. So if you have a shop or you have a business, your run rate is to calculate how fast you will run out of money or how fast you estimate you run out of money. When that time comes, let's say if it's over one year period, over that year period, you can then calculate your burn rate, which is how much you are actually spending and how much you've also spent. That's the difference between your run rate and your burn rate. Your burn rate looks back at how much you have spent and how much you are spending money, whilst your run rate looks at more of a budgeting, more of like how much do I feel that I will be able to keep up my business running and going until I run out of money. I feel like this distinction is important and that will be all for today's Entrepreneur. Keep well. Brought to you by Africa School of Entrepreneurship. The Entrepreneur You series comes your way every Monday and Thursday right here on Prime Business, also on Joy FM and on all our social media platforms. My name is Emma Davis and that's it for tonight. I leave you with international business. Have a good evening.